Okay. We're good? Yeah. All right. So thank you guys for joining us for this Heal Documentary Facebook Live. It's my first time doing Facebook Live, so if anything goes wrong, just laugh and forgive me. Um, yeah, so we, we'll give you guys a couple minutes to log on, maybe a minute or so. Uh, what, what are we talking about? Well, people are logging on. But we got Darren Weissman here, everybody. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be here with you, Kelly, and, and uh, as people are plugging on into this Facebook Live, we're just going to set the stage for just building upon all the awesome things that uh, you have created and manifested with that great documentary uh, film, Heal. So awesome. Oh, thank you so much for being a part of it. You're, you're part of the reason that it was, it, that it's such a good you know, success so far because you are uh, sharing wisdom that everybody needs to know to, to learn about their own innate healer within. So yeah, as everybody is, is joining us, um, I would like to welcome you all to the Facebook Live with Darren Weissman. Um, I wanted to do these Facebook Lives because I feel like it's important to continue the conversation and give people continuous support and, and feedback. Um, and also, there's just so much that I wanted to share in the film and wasn't able to because, you know, you can only make a film so long. So one of the, the important um, you know, messages that I want to continue in the film is, is one of Darren Wiseman. So I asked him to be here today. He's an amazing, amazing guy. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him right now. He is um, a chiropractic holistic physician. He is a best-selling Hay House author, multiple books. Check them out. Um, he is also the developer of the Lifeline Technique, which is an amazing, amazing healing technique that he developed it's brilliant and um he's available for you if you guys need healing so he's going to tell you a little bit about that today very exciting um so darren welcome hey thank you awesome okay so one of your core messages in the film i think yeah. is important for everybody to understand um it, you talk about our symptoms and pain as meaningful conversation and feedback from the body. Now, a lot of us, we get a symptom, we get sick, we get a diagnosis, we feel pain, and we immediately go to kind of a victim mentality like, oh, why me? And my body is failing me, it's breaking down. Um, but you say, no, let's look at symptoms and you know the disease or the pain as feedback, it's a conversation the body is having with you. So I think that's such an important shift that people can make, that one from victimhood to empowerment. And, and it also shows just how intelligent and loving the human body is. So can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, it, in, and I really, I agree completely. It, the human body is loving. However, when someone is in a state of stage four cancer, when someone's body is speaking to them with autoimmune disease or Lyme disease or allergies, any aspect of anxiety or depression, um, it, it doesn't really look like that that's loving. However, uh, I call that a gift in very strange wrapping paper because the body's wisdom is it is designed to heal. It is designed to regenerate and we are already whole. And as um, you demonstrated so well in the film that at the core of the fundamental principles that go along with people that have healed from diseases again and again that's been reproducible, the fundamental core of it is the mindset. A person's thoughts, how we think about ourselves, our beliefs about ourselves, the world around us, and that goes true to the symptoms and dis-ease in our body. And one of the things that I do when I'm working with clients, and I don't even call them patients, even though I'm a doctor and I'm trained and I was trained to diagnose, uh, and rather than even calling people patients, which puts them in a position where now I'm a victim of this disease, I call people clients and I work with people in that way. I teach people that everything that you think is a problem is actually a portal. And what I mean by a portal, Kelly, and everyone, is that it's a doorway 
into the next greatest version of ourself. Our body speaks our mind. Our body speaks our mind. Our body is an expression of our mind. But most of our mind is below the surface. Most of our mind is subconscious, meaning it's reactive in nature. It's programmed. So we need to have a way to interpret this invisible field of energy that is our subconscious mind so that we can discover what it's actually saying because it, it is loving but from the surface like the tip of an iceberg there's something below that's very meaningful it's very purposeful and and, and i find the biggest learning curve the first big learning curve of recognizing that this is actually a loving expression is to go there are no problems I've been diagnosed with this. I have this symptom. I've got headaches. I've got disc disease. I've got arthritis. I've got inflammation, whatever it might be. The first big learning curve is an understanding and appreciating the philosophy that this is a portal. This truly is a portal. If once we get to that, then the next learning curve is how can then I apply that philosophy and have an application where it becomes a daily practice where I can create my own mind medicine rather than the poisonous reactive thoughts that we often get caught up in. Yes, and there, we're reactive because we have these subconscious programs, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it's, that's the nature of the subconscious mind. It's reactive and the conscious mind is active. So to, they, they're always working together. The conscious active mind is the only mind that can choose. So when we are aware, we're conscious. When we're aware, we're conscious. And then we can, then we can choose. Oh, I'm aware that I've got an Asian pear right now and um, I can choose to take a bite out of it, right? Like only if I'm aware of it. If I'm not aware, I don't have a choice on that. The subconscious mind, there is no choice. It doesn't judge. Now, when it gets triggered, it goes like the blink of an eye or a tap on the patellar tendon. The knee jerk reflex occurs. It's subconscious. Every cell of the trillions of cells are programmed to react. That's how 50 plus trillion cells are capable of communicating because there's these reactive checks and balances that enable all of the organs, glands, senses, and systems to work together. It's a miracle, it's amazing. But the key is the conscious mind's only two to 10%. The subconscious mind makes 90 to 98%. Most people are working on a conscious level. Make the elbow pain, the tennis elbow go away. Make the inflammation in my gut, the leaky gut, the chronic fatigue, make it go away. I just wanna avoid this food because I'm sensitive. That's just reacting to the reaction. How do we bypass our conscious perception and get to the core of this subconscious program mind? Because here's the thing, the subconscious has two primary focuses. One, it orchestrates healing. We do not consciously have to tell red blood cells to carry oxygen to cells and carbon dioxide away. They're just subconsciously programmed to do it and live 120 days and then break down and form new red blood cells in the bone marrow. It's amazing. We don't have to tell our body to do it. That's subconscious programming. But besides orchestrating the healing of our body, the immune system, digestion, hormone, the subconscious mind also stores memories. Now, this is a very interesting thing because memories in our subconscious mind affect our perception. How we perceive in any given moment is based upon the memories that live in our subconscious mind. Now I'm gonna throw in a wild card here because there's certain memories, Cal, that aren't fully processed. They're not fully integrated into our consciousness. And when they're not, guess what they are? Emotionally charged. And those memories, when they get triggered, they hijack, they hijack our mind and body. Oh yeah, I, ha I have a few of those. 
<laughs> everyone does. Everyone does. Everyone does. The subconscious mind is seven times faster than our conscious mind, our best ninja trained conscious mind. So when it gets triggered, these memories cause our brain and body to react as if the memory were going on and on and on. And as you talked about and how you demonstrated in HEAL is stress. What does that create? It creates stress. It creates a lens of stress because now I'm looking through my eyes as the man that I am today, but I've got an eight year old little boy inside of me that is actually running my perception. And if we can activate that subconscious core and we can process those emotionally charged memories, that's when we evoke the fullest potential of our body's ability to heal, for us to be resilient and regenerate in any and every given situation. So you say that, you know, emotions that are not fully formed, they could, you know, they're they're causing us to react, get triggered. So it's, it's almost like we're on the subconscious loop of limited or negative kind of beliefs about life based on that experience that we could not fully process. So it's, um, talk about, yeah, why, why don't those emotions fully process? That's a great question. That's a great question because, hey, what's wrong with me? Why did it happen? You know, here's the thing. Life is about this. This means I love you in American Sign Language. Life is about love. Life is about love. And the greatest power that we have in this infinite universe is self-love. Self-love is the greatest power. Now, the biggest emotional virus in our world is low self-esteem. We don't recognize just how valuable and worthy we are. And everyone is infinitely worthy. Everyone is infinitely valuable and has come to this planet to shine so bright, but we have experiences in life where there's these moments where in these particular moments, the ability to deal with a loss, a trauma, a change, where something's going on and we don't have the ability to be present and choose love in our environment does not have an advanced degree in high self-esteem in communication. Our mother and father can't give us what they don't have to give to themselves. People do their best. And what the subconscious mind does is it gives us a gift of protection. Now this is so key. It gives us a gift of protection where we don't have to process the emotion and we're put in a survival mode. Now another name for the survival mode as we know is the freeze, fright, fight or flight. Now what happens is, and it's, it's exactly like Pavlovian conditioned reflexes, where all of a sudden that memory that's not fully processed because we don't have the ability to process the emotions, our environment doesn't. Here is what I call in the lifeline, I call it the spirit protection reflex, where we're, we don't have to process the emotions, but at some point, if we want to evolve in our consciousness, we have to process those emotions. So those emotions don't just sit there idly, just waiting for us to wake up one day. They're getting triggered and they're moving and they're ultimately, they're a lighthouse in a dark night. And they might show up as, oh, I get this tightness in my low back. Oh, my gut flora is out of balance. Oh, my hormones are on a roller coaster ride. All kinds of symptoms based upon acupuncture meridians involved, based upon chakras that are involved, based upon all kinds of things that um, are associated with being a human being. So the key is why it happens is we don't have the ability to choose love in a particular moment and either does the environment. And at one point, as a result of going through the same pattern again and again, it's like when you get lost and you get lost in the same place again and again, it starts to look familiar. And it's like when the symptoms start to come through, we start to recognize a power, a value, a worth, a capability, a pattern, a story. And soon we get the ability and we go, you know what, hell no, I don't choose this. This is what I choose. And ultimately, the essence of it is, as Joe Dispenza said, sometimes we need a wake-up call to wake up. Everyone is getting a wake-up call in our world today through the different symptoms and stressors that we are individually and collectively struggling with. 
Amazing. So, and for all of you joining in with us, we um, hopefully we'll have a couple minutes at the end for you guys to type in your questions and we'll be able to answer those questions for you. Um, but so, okay, so now that you've explained how, you know, we just have these emotions that are unprocessed, that are from our past and they're in our cells and our cell memory and our subconscious mind. And that's why we get triggered emotionally in life. And it might manifest as in our physical later in life to wake us up so that we can heal those emotional wounds. Um, can you tell us about the lifeline technique, how it really, how you use it to heal people? What is the lifeline technique and, and how can you use it? And I'd like to shift the verbiage because the verbiage is so important. The lifeline is not used to heal people. And the, and the patterns of emotion that are in motion like that they are there so that we choose to live an intentional life. The essence of the lifeline is I bring people through a process. It looks like it's complicated, but it's really simple. But it looks like it, this is my life's work. This is a roadmap of the subconscious mind. And it guides us through a process. But the biggest thing about this is it's about setting intention. It's about what we focus on grows. And so oftentimes people focus and they go, I don't want the headache. Of course not. You wouldn't have chosen it in the first place. I, you know, I don't want the disease. I don't want the skin blotches. I don't want whatever it might be. The key is in the face of the physical symptoms and the stressful patterns that live in our relationship. And they are one and the same. Bruce Lipton, biology of belief. It's also the behavior of belief. They're intertwined as one. And when we see these patterns of emotional psychology and physical biology as the conversation, now the lifeline guides people through a process where it's not therapy. You, know, you don't have to talk about your stuff, but it's very therapeutic. You know, it's not to heal someone, but it's very healing the essence of it is there are steps, I call them manifestation steps, where we shift and evolve the reactive into the active. We take the caterpillar and we go into the chrysalis and we evolve into the butterfly. It's the same thing that goes on within our being. The primary way that I help people to whether I'm working one on one or I'm teaching somebody so that they can do this for themselves because I've learned the beauty about this is that rather than like, oh, I've got this special thing that I can do and only I can do it. No, my blessing is that I have found a purpose in being able to share with others how they can use this process as a daily practice for creating conscious change in their lives, in their bodies, in the relationships. And what I teach them first and foremost is how to communicate with the subconscious mind. And that's called muscle reflex testing. Now, muscle reflex testing began ultimately in 1964, George Goodhart, who's a chiropractor, he was the developer of applied kinesiology. He's the grandfather of applied kinesiology. How to use muscles as reflexes to have an understanding how certain organs, glands, meridians, energy channels in our body are functioning or not through the strength or the weakness of different muscles. It's amazing. And there's different people throughout time who built upon Dr. Goodhart's work, Dr. Victor Frank, Dr. Scotty Walker, who developed systems like total body modification, neuroemotional techniques, amazing systems, amazing. So, I use kinesiology, muscle reflex testing, as a means to communicate with the subconscious. This system, its primary basis, like TBM is a body system, NET is an emotional system. The lifeline is about consciousness. It is about, it's about how do you raise your consciousness? You know, David Hawkins sort of book power versus force. And it's about the different levels of consciousness. How do you actually raise your consciousness so that you can be the enlightened person that you are destined to be? And so muscle testing is what I do. And there's ways that you can learn how to self-muscle test. 
and there's ways that you can muscle test with another person to guide them into transforming these reactive patterns with love, with infinite love and gratitude. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I saw you, I first met you, I think, at a Celebrate Your Life conference in like 2010, right. and I saw you demonstrate muscle testing with people on stage, and it really is fascinating. Is, is, there, is it possible for you to demonstrate to yeah. our Facebook yeah. out there? Yeah. Now, check it out. First and foremost, I want to show you, and, it, and it's kind of wild because it's hard to really tell what's going on if I'm doing it for myself, but if I'm muscle testing myself, right, I want to read my own subconscious mind. I take my elbow, I put it in close to my body, I've got it bent about 90 degrees, and I imagine I'm holding a bucket. Got a bucket filled up with like three pounds of gold. And now, I push down on my hand, and I'm feeling for a lockout. I wanna feel that the muscle locks into place. So I push down, and I tell myself, hold strong, and I'm looking for it to lock out. I'm not bouncing, I'm pushing down slow, steady, and confidently, so I can feel a lockout. That's called zero point. And zero point lets me know I've got a reflex to work with. I established zero point right here. Cool. Now, what's crazy and amazing is we are being triggered on a subconscious level every three to five seconds. Every three to five seconds, a subconscious pattern, a memory that's emotionally charged, is being triggered on subtle and sometimes extreme levels, okay? So I wanna show you the nature of what it looks like to activate the reactive patterns on a subconscious level. So I'm just gonna use words. Like Dr. Masuri Emoto used words to show the impact on water. I'm gonna use words because we are water beings. So I go, love, love, love. I'm getting to the energy, I'm feeling love, 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 hold strong, and I feel it just lock out. And now I say, and I feel it, fear, just a word, fear, fear. And I hold strong. Hold strong, hold strong, and the muscle gives way. Now here you are watching and you're like, well, how do I know that you're not just doing that? I know, it's kind of wild. I'm gonna finish on love because it's always just a better feeling. Love, 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 it locks out. So I've got my daughter Rumi here and I'm gonna do muscle testing with my daughter Rumi. Rumi's 10, Rumi, come over here, sweetheart. Say hi to Kelly. Hi, Rumi. <laughs> hey, say hi to everybody else out there. Hi. <laughs> so I'm gonna have Rumi Turn this way. And so Rumi has been muscle tested since she was a baby. She's grown up in this family, right? So she's gonna keep her arm bent at 90 degrees, elbow in, and sweetheart, imagine that you've got a bucket and there's like a kitten in there, right? So there's some strength, you wanna hold it. Don't let me push. I wanna first feel for the lockout, the zero point. So hold strong. So this is zero point, it just locks into place. Hold strong. Watch what happens to Rumi's arm when I let go. Let's do it again, hold strong. So it bounces like a, like a diving board. That's a zero point. So Rumi, say the word love. Love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Elbow in, hold strong. Say the word fear. Fear. Fear, fear, fear. fear. Elbow in, hold strong. You ready? Hold strong. Are you ready? Tell me if you're ready. ready. Hold strong. Are you able to hold strong? No. Now say love, love, love. Love, love, love. Elbow in, hold strong. So just the thought, just the words impact us. Now, I'm gonna have you take a moment right now, and I want you to think about something at school that causes you to feel upset or stressed. Just take a moment and connect to something at school You'll notice you think about someone or something. Are you thinking about someone or something? You got it, come over here, elbow in, hold strong, hold strong. So the nervous system just thinking about school immediately goes into a reactive survival fight for a flight. That's a sign that there's a memory that's emotionally charged. So what do we do? When we go like this, infinite love and gratitude. Think about that thing at school. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Now think about that situation at school, elbow in. Think about that situation at school, hold strong. And the muscle immediately locks out in the skin. I love you. Oh, thank you, Ruby. Awesome. So it, what's wild is, you know, 
the essence of the lifeline is it goes into different layers of consciousness and how it affects us emotionally, structurally, chemically, our beliefs, how we process things while we're sleeping, REM patterns like from EMDR, how to process trauma without doing therapy. And I'm not saying that therapy is bad because my brother's a therapist, he's a psychologist, but he's also trained in the lifeline technique. And he uses it because it gets to the core of the subconscious memories that are emotionally charged that create these biological maladaptive stress reactions, these behavioral highs, lows, attention deficit, rituals, addiction, that perpetuate these patterns where people are stuck, people are stressed, people are suffering. And there are ways that we can personally learn to own our power and create a practice, because that's the key. Create a practice so that we can evoke healing within ourselves. I think the lifeline technique is amazing. I've gone through it myself. Um, can you just let people know out there just some of the things that you've been able to help people move through because I want, you know, and you can do it over Skype. That's the thing. So you maybe touch on how you can be a surrogate for someone over Skype and, and what kind of things have you helped people transform? I mean, everything, everything, but I'll, I'll just talk about today. So today I was working with a woman who had uh, uh, the symptom and the disease called tinnitus, which is ringing in your ears. And, um, we uh, went through the process, and uh, when we went through the process, at the end of the process, she no longer had ringing in her ears. And what she ended up, she ended up realizing this. She ended up realizing, she goes, and she's a very in tune, you know, yoga, conscious eating, aware person. She ended up realizing that when she is in her high vibration of her highest self, when she is holding herself authentic and genuine in integrity of who she is around stressful situations, it doesn't go on. And when she's allowing herself to be just ultimately bullied or just overwhelmed with life circumstances, it is blaring. It was amazing. So we went through this process, we set intention, boom. I had a woman today, it was the first time I was working with her. Um, she was diagnosed with cancer and uh, she's had uh, a, um, a transplant in her liver and she you know, I always tell people with, uh, you know, this type of diagnosis, you gotta have a dream team. You gotta have a dream team. But the key to a dream team is you, if you don't have somebody working on a subconscious level, then everyone else is just working on the conscious level. And so she was so excited. By the end of the session, she was just feeling so calm, so connected, you know, inner power. I've worked with people with tick-borne disease, Lyme, different things like that. And I want to make something clear. I don't heal these diseases. The body is designed to heal. I help people raise their consciousness through this process that's called the lifeline technique. That ultimately, like one gentleman with stage four prostate cancer that had metastasized in his body, and he was told to get things in line for himself, that was three years ago, and he is now certified in the lifeline, and he has changed his whole life, and just in his power, and it's like, he still, he had his oncologist, he had his nutritionist, he had different things that he's worked with, but he got to the core and he owned it. You know, so those people that are eager and hungry to, you know, take that evolutionary jump into this magical mystery tour of the mind. And it really is. It's the great mystery. It is the great frontier. And it, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It, it sounds so weird. And I, I tell people sometimes, like, you know, you might even find here you are working with me and you came with all these intense things. You're probably going to find at one point you're going to say, wow, Dr. Darren, I never realized that actually healing could be fun. Like if you might be in a situation where like you could never even imagine that right now because of what you're going through. But there's a conversation. Muscle testing is a way that you can begin and there are steps and they're specific. They're not random. I, I was downloaded in 2002 with a specific sequence of steps based upon my life's work of the past 25 years. And, um, and it's beautiful. It's really life affirming. That's amazing. I know we're, we're getting close to the the end here, but we can go over a couple minutes. 
Um, I want to take one question because I want to honor the audience that is tuning in. Uh, yeah. it's from Victoria Harris Cochrane. Um, she wants to know how would you explain how this relates to babies who are born with disease or other young children? And you can answer it however you want, but I do remember you saying you worked with a, a girl and got rid of her, helped her raise her consciousness and then a peanut, she was no longer allergic to peanuts. I don't know if you want to share that or a different story, but. Yeah, well, I mean, there's tons of stories. I work with children all the time. I work with children all the time. And um, the essence of the mind is something that is beyond time and space. And um, the mind isn't attached to outcomes and it, it, it doesn't judge about, you know, here's this beautiful child. You just met my beautiful child. That's one of three children. Um, you know, when they're hurting, it hurts me as a dad. It just is what it is. It's life. Um, but the essence is, is that every symptom, every stress, every disease, even in children is a conversation, not bad, not right, not wrong. It's just a conversation. Some conversations are just epically difficult to have, but here's the thing that I've come to understand that is if we can process emotion and it's my humble opinion that processing our emotions in the present moment is the most important thing that you could ever learn to do. Processing your emotions with intention of your I am divine self is the most powerful thing you could ever learn to do. So as a parent, as a child, we do our best. It's a practice, not a perfect. So children, you know, like you, I, I shared with you in the filming, there was a, a young girl with anaphylactic peanut allergies, had tested with her pediatrician, her mother brought her in, and uh, we went through a month of um, sessions. And then I, I, you know, I'm rather than being naive, I, I would never say, go now, go eat peanuts. I say, you go to your pediatrician, you get evaluated, you have the prick test to make sure that it is what it is. You do the test, the challenge in front. And she did, and she was no longer allergic to peanuts. And, um, and the pediatrician was, you know, in awe of it, you know, and so, I had another one, it was really fascinating. This is pretty wild, but I'm just gonna go there. Um, it, was a, it was a young girl and she's like maybe between three and four. And she started to develop massive panic anxiety attacks. This child would go into terror mode. And um, it happened with men with goatees. Now, here's the thing that the, the parents um, they went they, to everywhere, got her on medication, did everything. They attempted to do everything to help their child that was just in massive anxiety panic. And her favorite uncle had a goatee, and he was a favorite uncle for a certain time, and then all of a sudden. So obviously the question is, oh, was there some type of sexual abuse or something going on? And the parents, they never had let the kid out of their sight. It's never been impossible. So somebody said, hey, if you're open, go see Dr. Darren. If you're open, just be open because you might not be used to this process, but just be open. So they came on in and I'm just doing what I do. So I'm not here to prove to people. So I'm just doing it. I'm so used to doing this that I don't even think that this might be weird. And what came up was a memory, but not from this life. It was a past life memory. And in this past life memory, and I don't know if you can see this, but let's see if I can show you. In this past life memory, there is this part process that's called personal invasion. Personal invasion, can you see that? Yeah, emotional, so, physical, sexual, spiritual. Right, and what showed up was sexual personal invasion in a past life. So like, so here I am, I'm explaining it, I'm harmonizing, we're going in for love and gratitude, we're raising the consciousness with intention, parents are going through it. I don't think I have anything of it. I don't see these people. Uh, they don't come back. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, they just thought I was some kind of freakazoid and this is just something so weird. So I get a call a year later and it is from this woman and she goes, you worked with my sister-in-law's daughter and she had these horrible panic terror attacks. And after the session, she never had them again. I'd like to come on in. I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy to hear from you because I never heard from them. They never called, they didn't say anything. I would think they, they would say something. I mean, throw me a bone. I mean, I'm not taking credit for blame, but still it would have been nice to hear from you. So what's wild is memories. 
are fascinating. And it really behooves us to ask questions like, who are we? Who are we as spiritual beings? You know, there's a lot of different philosophical things that are out there and amazing things, but more than half the planet uh, believes in past lives. And I've come to understand that uh, they're a reality on a certain level that they influence aspects of ourselves. So children definitely can have imprints and conditions from all aspects of development within the womb and before. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it's not about doing therapy on this or wishing it away or pushing away or just, it's about just going on in, that's the portal and I follow the steps or I teach people how to use the steps for themselves to create really a uh, positive change. Thank you. I hope that um, helped answer Victoria's question. At least, you know, you can work with children and, and explore that. Um, so, yeah, so we've kind of gone over time here. It's been fascinating. Obviously, we're going to have to do another Facebook Live where you teach us all how to process emotions healthily so that they don't stick in our subconscious reactive mechanism. Um, so we'll, we'll have to do that again because I don't think, you know, the majority yeah. of us not even I'll be yeah, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. And um, I know you have one, uh, you have a something to offer the audience, a, a free kind of healing session or experience of the Lifeline? Well, I, first and foremost, I created a video on muscle reflex testing that goes deeper into it. And so if you'd like to learn more about muscle reflex testing, as well as experience an hour and 15 minute live, um, it's called the Lifeline Healing Circle and it's an online lifeline group session. Vision is world peace to inner peace. Um, you can click on the link and uh, just fill in your information and then we'll meet you on the other side and you'll get the free video and you'll also be able to participate for free in the next live healing circle, which is really, it's beautiful and it's awesome. Okay, cool, yeah, we'll have the link in a comment below, I believe. Um, so check out that link. And then um, we have, I want you guys to tune in next week. We have Peter Crone on talking about acceptance and uh, versus resistance. Um, and of course, you know, if you love Darren, check out his work at lifelinecenter.com. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's really fascinating. It's, it's, it's just, I encourage everyone to try it. And um, he's just pure love, this guy. And uh, again, uh, if you like the film, if you haven't seen the film yet, go watch it. Go and check it out. It's amazing. If you like it, uh, please share. So thanks, everybody. And uh, we love you and have a great day. Infinite love and gratitude. Thank you, Kelly, so much. Infinite love and gratitude.